One of the biggest changes that affected the most number of taxpayers this year, um, aside from the overall decrease in tax rates, is the increase in the standard deduction. It went to 12,200 for single, um, 18,350 for head of household, and 24,400 for uh, married filing joint tax returns. If you're not familiar with the way the standard deduction works, the standard deduction is what the IRS gives every taxpayer. Pretty much just for breathing, you get that deduction on your tax return. If you look at your deductions, your itemized deductions, and they exceed that, you're allowed to deduct that on your tax return. So the fact that the standard deduction increased so much this year, a lot of taxpayers are no longer itemizing, and it's not really that significant to them anymore. I would say maybe half of the taxpayers we had last year or in the previous year that were taking itemized deductions are now getting the standard deduction just because it's so high now. But there have been some changes made within the itemized deductions that we wanted to go over to make sure you're aware of. The first is mortgage interest deduction. Previously, you were allowed to deduct the interest on up to $1.1 million of mortgage interest indebtedness. That has been decreased to $750,000 under the new tax law. If you had a large mortgage prior to December of 2018, you're still allowed to take that mortgage interest deduction. But it, for any new mortgages, you're going to be limited on interest on the first $750,000. The next thing is charitable contributions. Those are still deductible as an itemized contribution. However, there is no longer any deduction allowed for the purchase of athletic tickets. This goes along with something else in the law that entertainment in general is no longer deductible as a business deduction for anyone. So we have a lot of clients that have purchased Golden Knights tickets, Raider tickets, spent a lot of money on this stuff, and they're telling us, but I'm taking clients and I'm taking my employees, and there's no deduction for any entertainment expenses anymore. So that was one that people really didn't like. The next one is also, um, didn't hit us too hard here in Nevada, but a lot of people were really affected. Um, the deduction for taxes paid is an itemized deduction. So if you live in a state that has a state income tax or high property taxes, you're now going to be limited to $10,000. In Nevada here, that's not so much of an issue. We don't have a state income tax, and our property taxes are not outrageous. But we work with a lot of clients in California, and this was significant to them that they could have $20,000, $30,000, dollars $50,000, and now they're limited to $10,000 as far as a tax deduction. The next one is miscellaneous itemized deductions. Um, they took away the job-related expenses. So if you drive for work or you take people out to lunch or if you have to buy supplies for your work, a lot of people had those as itemized deductions previously. They can no longer deduct those. That's just gone out of the new tax law. Still have a lot of people keeping track of it, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Um, also, investment fees, um, that was one that hurt people that, you know, for years they've been be being able to deduct that. That's a deduction that went away under the new tax law as well. Also, um, casualty and theft losses are now limited, and the overall, there used to be a uh, limitation to overall itemized deductions. That's gone away, so if you happen to itemize, you can take them all. There's no limitation for higher income taxpayers. And we wanted to review some reminders about charitable contributions. Uh, they're still deductible, like we talked about, with the exception of athletic tickets. However, it's important to point out it needs to be to a qualified charity. Um, there's a lot of giving now through like GoFundMe and these types of websites, or people want to help out their neighbor or family member. That may be charitable in your heart, but not according to the IRS. In order for it to be deducted on your tax return, it needs to be a qualified charity. If you're not sure, you can go to the IRS website and they list all the qualified charities. Another reminder is that for any contributions of $250 or more, you need proof of that. So although it's nice if you're going to make a large donation to the Salvation Army to put it in their red bucket at Christmas time, any significant contributions, you really should write a check and get a receipt. Um, just keep in mind the IRS can disallow it. So we have a lot of clients every year that go, I give a lot of money to charity and I just don't keep track of any at $20 here, da, da, da. If you're going to itemize and take charitable deductions, it's important you keep track of that. The other reminder is regarding non-cash contributions. So when you're cleaning out your garage or your closets and you're giving to Goodwill, make sure you get a receipt when you donate all of your stuff there. Um, if it's over $500 of value, we need to document who it was... You need to fill out a form showing who you donated those things to. 
Um, that donation is supposed to be fair market value. So that is what you would sell your junk for, not necessarily what you bought it for. So some people think that's really valuable, and some people are more realistic about it. And some people ask me to what I think, and I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> They're like, whatever you think. I'm like, I don't know what your stuff looked like. So um, kind of think, what if you were selling it to a consignment store or yard sale or those types of things? That's the value that you can take for um, your charitable deduction. Um, and I think the, the biggest point we wanted to bring under this new tax law with the changes in the standard deduction is there's a little opportunity for planning here. Um, two different things to point out. One is bunching of expenses. So if you are going to be charitable, maybe be charitable every other year. So it pushes you above that standard deduction, and then maybe you're below. So if you're going to donate in Jan December and then January, maybe double up on your donations. Same thing with property taxes. Maybe prepay those for the following year. So in year A, you're above it, and you're maximizing those, and the next year you're taking the standard deduction, rather than constantly being right under that limit and not getting benefit for it. Another way to take advantage of this is to, for charitable contributions, if you have charitable intent through the use of donor advised funds. That allows you to make a substantial charitable contribution, get the donation in the year you made it. Those funds can grow tax free and then they can still go to a qualified charity of your choice. So instead of giving $1,000 every year, you could put $10,000 into a fund in one year and if that pushes you over the standard deduction, you could get some additional tax benefit for it. So there's been a lot of changes in it. And like I said, a lot of clients are no longer um, itemizing. We're just recommending still keep track of these things, and we'll look at it year by year and see if it's most beneficial for you to take the standard deduction or itemize. 